Hi, I'm Mike Santos with Nova Polymers. Today we're going to uncreate and install the Orbital 10 photopolymer processor. What we have here is the Orbital 10 in the crate, just the way you'll receive it after you order the equipment. The first thing to note when you receive the Orbital 10 is to look at the shock monitor label that is on the front of the crate. If you look at it and the monitor is white, everything is fine. If it happens to be red, that means it has been shaken or possibly damaged during shipping. The reason that this is important is the exposure unit and the post-exposure unit have UV lamps in them. Now typically it's not a problem during shipping, but if that monitor is red, they could be damaged. So if that's the case, you want to make note of any damage and certainly make note on the bill of lading. Now as we look around the machine here, we'll notice that the processor itself is banded to the crate. There is also a series of 2x4s that are holding the processor in place. On the back of the unit, there's another crate that holds the brush. The brush goes inside the processor and is used to wash out the polymer. So before we uncrate it, we want to visually inspect the machine and make sure there's no damage. Note it if you see it. If not, we can grab our tools and get started unpackaging. Now we've got everything unpackaged. The processor has been taken off the pallet and unwrapped. One thing to note when we take the processor off with a fork truck, make sure that we run the forks all the way underneath the processor so when we lift it up, the end of the forks don't poke through the bottom of the machine. Now we move on to the final step, which is uncrating the brush. Okay. Now that we've got the brush uncrated, we're ready to move everything into place and start the installation process. So we've got the Orbital 10 unpackaged and uncrated and in position. I've got the machine turned around so we can go over a couple of things. To get started, we're going to run power to it. So we've got our power cord here, and as you can see, there's no plug on the end of it. Typically, it gets hardwired in, and you can consult your electrician about that. Next, we're going to need to run water to the machine. We've got our water inlet and our drain outlet. Ideally, we'd like to have mixed water that's about 80 degrees. There is a heater inside the unit, but it holds about 20 gallons, so if it comes in really, really cold, it'll take a little while to warm up. Next, we have our drain here. On the inside of the unit, what we have is a manual overflow valve, which we'll look at when we get to the other side. And you can unscrew that, and then it will come out. What I would suggest that you do is take an on-off valve and put that on the drain outlet as well. That will allow you to easily reach around from the front of it turn the valve to drain the machine out. Now what you're going to want to do is have the drain running into a sink drain or something like that. What we recommend is to have an actual shop sink next to the processor itself. That way you can tie easily into that drain, pull water from the sink, and then take the brush out and put it in the sink when it needs to be cleaned. There's a couple of other things I want to mention here. If you look here, we've got three fans. We've got the large fan is for the exposure unit turns on while the machine's running and helps keep the bulbs cool. We have two smaller fans that are for the post-exposure drawer. And if you look over here, we have a water temperature gauge. It should be set for 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and once it's set, you really shouldn't have to touch it again. Same is true for the oven temperature. It's going to run at 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Just double check it, make sure it's lined up, and you'll be set. Right underneath here, we have the heating element for the dryer. And the last thing I want to mention is our drawer lock. The exposure drawer has two screws in the front of the machine, and the entire drawer is on sliders. And it will open up to give you access to the bulbs underneath and to the ballast and starters on top. So to open that drawer, first you come back here, unscrew the drawer lock, go to the front, unscrew those two machines, and you can pull the entire drawer out. So, now we're going to turn the machine around, go to the front, and talk about the installation of the brush and the exposure drawer. Now that we have power and water to the Orbital 10, we need to install the brush. So if we look inside here, we see the heating element on the back left corner. As we come across, we can see down here on the bottom right is our water inlet, and next to it is our drain. We can actually unscrew this and lift it up and the water will drain out of this corner. 
one of the reasons I mentioned earlier to have an on-off valve in the back so when we pull this up the water just doesn't come pouring out we can actually take this off and reach around the back and actually drain it out so we can screw this back in here as we come across here we get to the float switch the way the float switch works is that when you fill the tank up the switch will come up and it will turn on the heater when you drain the unit the float will drop and it will turn off the heating element you want to be careful as you're taking the brush in and out that you don't knock into this and break it. If that does happen, you want to replace it because if it does not trigger the heating element to turn on and off, you could melt the brush. In one of the corners, you're going to find eight L-shaped brackets. The purpose of these brackets are to come back here and to place on the posts. When the brush is set in the factory, it's set to wash out eighth inch and thicker material. Sometimes when you're washing out 16th inch or even aluminum back, you need a little bit more brush pressure to get a nice clean wash. So you can take the L brackets, place them on all four corners, and it will evenly raise the brush up. Now we're ready to install the brush. You want to locate the markings that indicate the fronts. The front you want facing you. So we're going to lift it up and bring it over to the machine here. And you're going to notice that there are four holes on the corners of the brush. They match up with the posts that are inside the washout tank. So we're going to lift it up here, bring it into the tank, and they should line up pretty easily here. Once they're set, you can feel it and make sure that it's in position. And now we're ready to add water. What we're going to want to do is bring the water level up just to the top of the brush bristles, just so they're covering the entire top of the bristle. And then at that point, we're ready to move on. Above the washout tank, we have the platen. On the platen is a green sticky mat. This is where the photopolymer sticks during the washout. The polymer will literally stick to this green mat. The lid gets closed and the entire platen oscillates in one direction. Then it will stop and oscillate in the other direction to make sure all the characters get a nice, clean, crisp washout. The only real maintenance that needs to occur on this is a little bit of lubrication in each of the four corners on a monthly basis. Now the last step before you mount the sign and wash it out is to remove the cover sheet that's on the green sticky mat. And now we're ready to move on to the exposure drawer. We come down here. What we have here is our black mat. The photopolymer sign goes on here with the polymer side facing up. Underneath the tank in here, we have our UV lamps. You'll note that there are two holes in the center on each side. Those are the vacuum holes. They go underneath to a line, a T-line underneath that goes to a vacuum pump inside the machine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mount a mylar cover sheet onto the surface of it that helps draw the vacuum down. In one of the dryer drawers, you'll notice the vacuum cover sheet. Let's take a look at it here. This is the hold down bar for the vacuum cover sheet. It has a magnetic strip on the one side. We should be able to just place it up here, get it out of the way for a second. And the cover sheet here unrolls and covers the entire exposure bed. There's a hold down bar on this side here. And what we want to do is we want to get it into position, okay? And then we want to take our bar here with the magnet and we want to place it on the back of the unit. There's also a magnetic strip on the back so it will hold in place. So once we have it in position here, we can come back here and just snap this in this place, okay? And now what we can do is we can roll this up and we place the sign down in the center. We place the negative on top of it. Pull the cover sheet over top of it, turn on the vacuum gauge, and close the drawer, and we're ready to expose. The last thing I want to mention is that on the main exposure drawer and the post exposure drawer, there's a magnetic sensor. There's a magnetic sensor that's taped to the drawer itself and one that's taped up inside of the unit. When the two of them connect, it makes that magnetic connection and turns the timers on. If for whatever reason you close the drawer, everything's powered up and the timers won't come on, check the magnetic sensors. 
since they're taped on there, sometimes they rattle loose and don't make the proper connection. So they're either on the right hand side in this case, or if we look down at the other drawer, the post exposure drawer, we can see that it's on the left side here.